Kick 105, good morning. It's the Maryland the Morning Show. As once again, we team up with our friends at St. Luke's Health Memorial in Lufkin. And our theme for 2023 for this uh, heart takeover is you depend on your heart, so take care of it. St. Luke's Health Memorial can help. Now, we've talked to cardiologists and we've, you know, kind of run the gamut here as far as, uh, you know, things that are available at uh, St. Luke's. And uh, it's time to bring in, I think the last time I talked, you know, at length to this gentleman, I think you were sitting in the superintendent's office there at LISD. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yes, sir. So we have a retired Lufkin School Superintendent, Roy Knight, with us, who I love all the different things that Tina typed out for us here. My goodness gracious. Some of these things I'm learning for the first time. (laughs) You know, obviously, I knew you superintendent, knew did some coaching at Lufkin High School, Uh, you know, you know, big time maroon wear at times with Texas A&M. I did not know that you were down in in yeoman country for a while. Oh, that's where we started with uh, with Cameron Yeoman in, Uh in, in the early 70s and uh it was uh it was a community much like uh much like lufkin right football was king oh yeah and and uh you know i'm from kind of the central texas area back in that day and age when you know the 70s and 80s and most teams were getting their tails kicked by by cameron well that was the plan <laughs> <laughs> i remember i remember cameron and rockdale would just always take uh, us oh, down well, it was a battle for the bell back yeah, in the day is that what that was it was <laughs> all right so anyway you are of course here you've been retired for how long now it's t- 10 years uh, this june uh-huh uh, time flies when you're having fun i was gonna say how, how's, how's retired life treating you well you you know, uh, people that told me I, I needed to find something else to do, another job that I'd get tired of hunting and fishing and playing golf were just wrong. <laughs> So, I'm mostly I'm chasing that. grandkids, Sandy, now, though. All right. So let's go ahead and paint the picture here. We go back just uh, basically three, four months ago in October, and uh, uh, you were enjoying, as she describes, an awesome round of golf. Well, uh, first of all, just let me state, a lot of people will be surprised to learn that I actually have a heart. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but to that end, I, I do indeed, and, and it's uh, it's healthier now than it was on October the 27th when, uh, when I saw suffered a heart attack so kind of paint kind of paint the picture because you were actually out on the golf course right I, I, I was i was playing golf with a with a friend uh-huh and uh, i'd actually shot about the best round i'd shot in four or five years uh feeling good we we go to my house sit on the back porch uh uh cooling off a little bit and sure. and uh uh that was about 2 30 at at 5 30 i experienced the first chest pains that i have ever felt in my life and uh, I mean, were they pretty oppressive, or just kind of like a little bit of a tinge? No, it it. Uh, I actually was uh, uh, doing some dumbbell lifting after golf to uh-huh. try at my age to maintain my strength, and uh, uh, all of a sudden, sharp pains. And, and you know, I had a notion of uh, in my mind what a heart attack was going to feel like. Right. This was nothing like it at all. Really? It, no, it, it it wasn't. I felt like it would be a an ache uh, in the lower part of my chest where I think my heart was. I- instead, I- the best description I have of this, and I think it's important because everyone's symptoms are a little different. Yep. Their pains are different. Right. For me, the pain was quite high in my chest, really just below my Adam's apple. And uh, it uh, it felt as though when when I've been in extremely cold weather and you, bring, you breathe in exceptionally cold air yeah, uh-huh. and it burns your chest like that 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 was what the sensation was like and it came on so suddenly till i was pretty sure i was having some kind of heart event right and uh, a couple of things along the way is as i tell this story i i uh, the first thing i did was go take an aspirin just in case right that that proved to be critical and actually in my survival really yeah yeah and uh uh i my wife had had been out Christmas shopping for the grandkids earlier during the day. Gratefully, she was home. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and the second part of this is she can drive a car like Parnelli Jones. For you uh, younger folks, that would be uh, more like AJ Foyt or sure. Mario Andretti. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, she she uh, we probably violated the number of speed records on the way from the house. Uh, to uh, to St. Luke's to Memorial and and uh, she got me there in a, in a hurry and, uh, and and kind of bridging that little gap there yeah. because when you said okay I'm thinking this is some sort of heart event yeah need an aspirin I mean how did you were you were you sitting right there with her when this event happened or did you have to go reach out to her or, yeah, or what well we, we we were both in the living room slash kitchen area and she uh-huh. was she was there in the kitchen preparing supper for us yeah. 
And uh, I'd, I'd finished this. I was doing curls and, sure. you know, a 71-year-old man trying to stay <laughs> as fit as he can. It takes a little more work than he used to. And uh, uh, the pain started. I went back to the to the bathroom and, and got the aspirin, took it, and came back in. And, and, and the pain was just getting worse, more and more severe. Right. I said, get, get your keys. We've got to go. Something's happening to my heart. Uh, we get in, in the vehicle. We drive as fast as we can there. On the way. Yeah. Uh, I uh, uh, I called nine one one. Said uh, call Memorial, tell them we're on my way. I'm having a heart attack. So when we arrived, they were ready uh, and and waiting. So let's talk about what happened as you got there. Because from what I understand, uh, there was a shift change going on, and that actually kind of might have played into your benefit. Oh, I, you know, th- there were several things. One is I took the aspirin. Uh-huh. Two, my wife drove <laughs> as as a stock car racer. And, and the third thing was it, it was indeed at shift change. Uh-huh. And and in, <clears throat> at Memorial, in the middle of a shift change, if there's an event like mine, yeah. no one leaves. So you have double the staff. There you go. And uh, it, that, that proved to be, uh, to my benefit, uh, primarily the, the speed driver that got me there uh, was real essential in, in my recovery. I hadn't been inside the uh, emergency room three minutes when I coded the first time. So let's, let's go ahead and explain that. When you say you coded, the heart stopped. My heart stopped, yeah. Okay. And uh, this... Of course, I say young nurse climbed on top of my chest and hit me as hard as she could with her fist, <laughs> knocked the breath out of me, and began chest compressions sure. uh, to restart my heart to no avail. I was thinking, she's going to break my ribs and I'm going to have punctured lungs here, but she was trying to save my life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, after probably 30 seconds of that, uh, she declared that there was still, you could see there was no sinus rhythm. It's just like you see on television right in, yeah in the soaps uh I, I had flatlined and uh but i was still awake fading but still awake and uh they hit me with the paddles the first time now i'm going to tell you i was awake when i wound up being paddled three times it proves to be a highly effective weight loss program <laughs> but i don't recommend it so so they <laughs> Again, the defib diet is not what you the, want to go on. No, no, sir. <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, it, they hit me with a paddle the first time and, and no results. And right. she said, uh, turn it up. They redid it again. Yeah. Hit me a second time. And as I said, I'm still awake and fading. And and I'm asking, did, do I have a heartbeat? Do I have a heartbeat? She said, you got a heartbeat. Let's go. So they uh, immediately loaded me uh, on the gurney, uh-huh. took me upstairs to the uh, operating room, and I coded a third time. So they had to paddle me the third time. Gratefully, got it, got me up and going too. And you know, you, you think, well, okay, so what are you thinking while all this is going on? And the nurse was saying, "Mr. Knight, talk to me, talk to me, talk right, to uh-huh. me." Well, it's kind of like riding with your wife in the car. Talk to me, talk to me. Okay, what do you want me to talk to you about? I'm having a heart attack here. <laughs> So I well, said that literally. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to talk about? Exactly. Just nice get my heart going. Nice day outside. Yeah. I survived the ride over, thankfully. Uh, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and she was just simply trying to keep me awake in, in a response. Sure, exactly. And uh, it, I can tell you it was a great, great team. The beautiful part for me is fully half the staff that was there were some of my former high school kids. That's Isn't that amazing? Oh, I, you know, thank you, Uh Thank you, God. What, 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 hopefully the ones that uh, you, you had a positive experience with. Well, you know, that yeah. crosses your mind. <laughs> one, one, I wonder if they remember me fondly uh, here as well. But, you know, I, I, I cannot overstate the care that I got there. Yeah. From the time I got out of the vehicle uh, until they carted me upstairs. And then uh, another great blessing in this is, is uh, my cardiologist, Dr. Venkata, and I'd never had a cardiologist of my own until now, uh-huh. was on call. And uh, his peers describe him as the Swiss Army Knife Heart Doctor of Lufkin, Texas. He can do it all. Uh-huh. And uh, as as uh, they wheel me upstairs and, and uh, the uh, OR staff, again, at that time, fully two-thirds of them were some of my former former high school students. Uh, they were there insuring, and all I could think of was – Okay, if I'm about to die, the last thing I had to eat was a dang salad. <laughs> Why? 
you know, it's again, again, the things you think of are odd. Why didn't I eat a steak at lunch? If I would knew I would, this was well, happening exactly, today. you know, sure enough. Uh, I, but you know, I, I, all joking aside, seriously, uh, had it not been for that staff, then, yeah. then they'd have been figuring out what songs you're going to sing at, at my memorial service, right? And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be eternally grateful. Uh, here's the beauty. Once I got upstairs, and this just speaks to the quality of of the particular uh, hard endeavors that that they had to do with me. Uh, they had to ca- they did a catheter, put, placed two stents in. Mm-hmm. That procedure I learned the next day from from the head of uh, the ER said, you know, Roy, I'm going to tell you that procedure normally takes 90 minutes. It took Doctor Vincata 40. So you say, okay, what difference does 50 minutes make? Well, sometimes it's the difference between your heart dying right. and heart tissue dying and not. And uh, uh, the the service, the quality of service that I received there, despite what you hear about how great it is in Houston, and it is, yeah, my the quality of care I got could not have been better had it been in Houston, Texas. At those world-renowned hospitals, we I had that care right here at uh, CHI Memorial. Two things, going back to your wife, okay? Yeah. So what is she doing? What is her reaction from the time that you get into the ER? I, I don't know if she was aware that immediately that you had coded or what the uh, what had transpired in the forty minutes that you got the. So what was what was her reaction in, yeah, during all yeah. this? Uh, it, she was actually in the emergency room with me. Okay. She is praying. Yeah. And the other thing is that in years past, when we've had uh, some of the folks in here talking about what to do and what not to do, one of the usual things, one of the things they usually say not to do is that if you have a heart event, call 911, right. let EMS come take you. Right. That is, un- unless of course you have somebody that can drive <laughs> like her, that would, that would yeah. be the little asterisk there, yeah, right? Yeah. If Mario Andretti's at your house and you can get there <laughs> safely, please, please do so. You know, a lot of things had to fall in place, uh, for, for that to happen. Had I waited on an ambulance, yeah. I probably wouldn't have survived. I got you. Uh, it was so, uh, the, the timing was so critical as far as me coding within the first three minutes I got into the ER that, that, that was, uh, uh, that was different. Yeah, and that's that's not to disparage our, our ER folks. They, sure, they work yeah. hard and yeah. they, they know as well. But uh, 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 God took care of an old man. Yeah. And uh, as I said to Tina earlier, um, and when folks say, boy, it's great to see you, and my response is, well, you know, I'd rather be seen than to be viewed. <laughs> <laughs> A couple, couple things here. You know, you – I guess it kind of surprises me to hear that even though you're coding, you're flatline, they've hit you twice with yeah. the paddles – that you're still coherent, you're still yeah. cognitive of what's going on. So, I mean, did you hear any sort of conversation? At that point in time, had they diagnosed what the actual issue was? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, right away, as soon as you get there, they, they get an IV in you, and they, they do a, a, a very quick blood test to determine uh, that what enzymes are, are elevated that yeah. indicate the heart attack. And and I hadn't been there five minutes when they said, Roy, you're having a heart attack. And... Uh, uh, which was certainly not a surprise, but but nonetheless, it, it was evaluated so quickly, and uh, you, you know he to describe uh, the the paddle experience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it is uh, it, it's a, it's a cross between sticking your tongue in an electric socket and getting hit in between the shoulder blades with a baseball bat. It, it is painful. Yeah. And and I confess, I actually said a couple of words that my mama didn't teach me to say. <laughs> but, but thank you, thank you, Lord. They knew what they were doing. Yeah, absolutely. They they, they saved an old man. And uh, uh, the following day, they I, I was up walking around, and uh, I asked the ER doctor, "So tell me, how close was I?" <laughs> he said, "Well, two pieces of advice. One is uh, invest in a lottery ticket." Oh, and, wow. and the second part is you, you need to know that uh, most people leave here in a body bag. With the same situation. Uh, with the same situation. Yeah, I, I, I referenced my old friend John Outlaw, uh-huh. our, our revered coach for a long time, had the same event, the, the same LAD, the left uh, descending artery uh, that supplies most of the blood. We know it as the widow maker. Yeah. And that was what I had blocked, that and another. So two cents later. 
and lots of rehab uh, through CHI uh, cardio rehab. rehab. Yeah, yeah it, it is awesome. Uh, you, you know, and, and uh, heck, thank thank goodness for great insurance and Medicare. I don't owe them a lot of money, and I can brag on them. Uh-huh. Uh, they saved my life. But the quality of the team care, and, and I would describe this in the hospital after – the team of cardiologists and, and, and Dr. Venkata and his team saved my life and, and got all the medical things done. Just as important was not just my physical well-being. They tended to my emotional, my spiritual well-being as well. And that's a credit to that organization. Uh, it, it's, it's one thing just to fix you up medically. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, it's, uh, it's an incredibly emotional experience. And, and uh, I experienced a lot of support from every staff member that, that I had. The only complaint I have is, is uh, a self-inflicted wound because now I don't eat nearly as much bacon as I used to. <laughs> you know, and, and the heart-restricted diets in the hospital are, are not biscuits and gravy well, anymore. I, you know. Well, you know, there, 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 there's more and more advancements now, whether, whether you go from turkey bacon to, you know, you soy or vegan bacon. You there you know, go. I guess. Yeah. Well, I, well, I will tell you, that's a learning experience. <laughs> I bet it is. Hey, real quick, Tommy, and I, I, I know this is common knowledge for many, but... You talked about the aspirin being something that uh, made, made it uh, you know, help to your survival. Ex- yeah. Explain that. Well, I, aspirin is, is what, what is characterized as a vasodilator. Uh-huh. It dilates, makes the blood vessels uh, bigger around so that blood flows through easier. Right. And, and that's a, a, a common recommendation. If you feel some chest pains, take an aspirin. Prob- I, I wish I had crushed it up. Before I took it, it, it would have uh, I would have ingested it sooner right. uh, into the bloodstream, but but that was critical into my survival. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's that was an important part of that, Danny. Thank you for asking that. Uh, and, and then you know, a week later, they've got me in cardiac rehab. Uh, are you still are you still doing that? I, I, yeah, as a matter, I came here from cardiac rehab okay. today, and uh, again, that's that's a, an exceptional team of people. The beauty of it is not only do they care for their patients, they care about one another as a team. They sure. look out for one another and, and speaks to the whole culture that, uh, that Memorial has working for, for me. And uh, uh, I, I'll continue on uh, with my rehab. And uh, I work, walked more in the past 90 days than the <laughs> previous 30 years <laughs> added up. And, uh, necessarily so. But, you know, I, I had uh, – Here's a scary part for me. I'm not a smoker. Yeah. I'm not particularly obese. Could lose a pound or two. And I've never had high cholesterol issues, ever. Yeah. Uh, when I got to be superintendent, developed a little high blood pressure that we managed with medication. But to think that, well, I'm making all the right decisions, so I'm, I don't have to worry about that, that's, that's a mistake. It, it can happen to you just like it did me. Played a great round of golf, had no chest pains playing golf. Yeah. Except that one putt I missed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I say I all could that have been say, under par. Yeah, I say, and, and again, I say all that to say it 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 can happen to any yeah. one, even when you eat right, exercise fairly regularly, and I did. Uh, it's uh, you're not immune from that. So uh, you, your genetic background p- plays a far greater role than than uh, obviously I wanted to admit. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, here I am today. Thank you for. CHI, St. Luke's Memorial. And then the real scary part for me is, okay, Lord, you saved a 71-year-old man to do what? Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, I'm still waiting on that answer. Well, I think that you're, part of that plan is what you're doing here today. I can guarantee you that. Well, thank you for that.